year 11, happy half term. Whether it's just been half term or whether it's about to be half term, this is kind of like, I don't really like it when the country split over half terms because, well, no, I just don't like it. Anyway, half term. Yeah, this is when things start to get real. We have less than 100 days left before your exams and you guys have a lot going on at the moment. Not only do you have to revise for your exams, but sixth form A-level choices is going to be coming up as well. So we do have quite a lot to think about. We do have quite a lot to talk about as well. So I'm going to start with um, A-level sixth form choices. Then I'm going to move on to tiering and papers. And then I'm going to talk to you about what you should be doing now. So this might be quite a long video. So as well as revising and thinking about all of the other stuff you have to do, there's probably going to be a few murmurings about sixth form applications and picking a levels. Now I've done you a whole separate series of videos where I go into lots and lots of things in detail about picking A levels but one of the main things I want to get across to you today is that don't worry quite so much. If you pick a subject and then change your mind, chances are the teachers are going to be more than happy to switch courses for you. I know um, schools that I've been in, there's lots and lots of switching going on, basically for the whole of the first half term of year 12. There's going to be switching on results day, you know, I got a B in this subject, I thought I was going to get a C, uh, can I do A levels? Or, you know, I was predicted a 7 in this subject, but I only got a 5, I didn't get on the A level. So acceptance on the A-level course is going to be based on what your predicted grades are, what the teachers think you're going to get and well it may not happen. You may find in August yourselves completely picking a different set of subjects. You may not want to do maths for A-level and then you come out with an 8 in maths for A-level like two grades above your actual A-level choices and you'll be kind of like oh maybe I should do maths for A-level because maths is a really good A-level to have. Or it might go the other way around. So just because you've made decisions now does not mean they're fixed in stone. And you don't have to just apply to one place, you don't have to stay in school or college where you are at the moment. You can get on a bus, you can get on a train, you can travel a little bit further each day and go see someone new, go meet new people. Or you may decide that you don't want to travel and you just still want to walk five minutes down the road to a local school. That's absolutely fine. The most important thing is picking subjects that you are going to be happy doing. Because if you pick a subject that you really, really dislike, like maths, for example, you're not going to want to do the work. You're not going to want to work really, really hard in it. And a-levels you have to put a lot of hard work in for. So pick subjects you enjoy doing, pick subjects that you're going to put the work in for. But we also need to think about picking subjects that are going to get us into university. So in a part of your daydream about the future, which I'll talk to you later on, start having a look at universities and say, I don't want to be an architect, what A-levels do I need? Because it is absolutely heartbreaking if you get to year 12, we start talking about UCAS applications and you can't get onto a dream course because you've got the wrong combination of A-levels. So start softly thinking about combinations of A-levels and the future. But don't panic too much about this because remember we can change this all the way up until the end. Now if you haven't got them already, very shortly you should be getting your exam timetables out. Now it is important that you check your exam timetables, you don't just screw them up, put them in your bottom of the bag and then when somebody at home asks them where they are, you pull them out a month later covered in juice. I know, it happens. You need to check them for a few things. You need to check that the exams that are on there are the ones you've actually been entered for. Um, you don't want to be doing French as your language and find that you've been entered for all the German exams by mistake. It happens. You also need to check the tiers, that you are down for the tiers that you expect to be down for. Now, the choice of tiers is generally going to be up to your teachers, but you can have some influence over this as well. Now I know lots of you are feeling the pressure to get higher grades as possible, 
but doing the higher paper isn't always the best thing for you. Sometimes doing the foundation paper is going to be better for you. Now I know for science, 40% of the marks are going to be common between the foundation paper. So the last 40% of the foundation paper is going to be the same as the first 40% of the higher paper. And then the rest of the higher paper, 60% of the higher paper, is going to be aimed at students who are getting 6, 7, 8s and 9s. Now if you're a grade 4 or a grade 5 student, that last 60% of the higher paper is going to be really, really hard for you to do because you're a grade 5 student and these grade 9 questions is going to be a lot, lot harder than you potentially expect it to be able to do. And if you're entered for the wrong tier, if you're entered for the higher tier, when really you should be sitting in the foundation tier, in science we've got six papers. If you come out of paper one and you can only answer two questions out of six, and then you come out of paper two, chemistry paper one, and you can only answer um, three questions out of eight, that's not a great feeling. That's not going to leave you enthusiastic and motivated to revise. Whereas if you came out of the paper feeling confident because you could answer all of it, and you knew the questions, and you were sitting there, and you finished early, and you were sitting there going, I've got this, I know these questions, I know that. That is a much, much better feeling to come out of the exam with, as opposed to, I didn't know what the answers were, and I feel really rubbish, and I can't do this, and why am I sitting in the higher paper? Sitting in the foundation paper is going to make you pull your shoulders back and go, yes, I've got this. This obviously isn't going to be the case for everybody. It's going to be those grade 5 students who are maybe higher paper, maybe foundation paper. You need to have a really, really serious think about how you're feeling in the exam, um, whether the foundation paper might actually be the best one for you. The advice coming down from the exam boards is that higher papers should really only be sat by students who are solid six grades or above. Now with less than 100 days to go before the exam starts, we really, really need to be ramping up our revision. So hopefully you've got lots of things prepared, hopefully you've got lots of things printed out. Whether you've gone over to my website and downloaded the guides for science, maths, English and geography, whether you've got those already all printed out and ready and waiting, whether you want to go to do that quickly. We need to start planning in times to do things. So I would like you to be doing more past papers. Now I know for some subjects there aren't a lot of those available and I've written a few to help you out with that. It is not a great idea to do past papers from old specs because well they're not necessarily very very relevant anymore. The very best way to revise is by doing as many questions as you can. So get your hands on questions, whether it's ones from school, whether it's ones from workbooks, whether it's ones that I've written for you. Do the questions, look at the mark schemes, and then see where you can improve on things. Have a think about different study techniques, whether it's flashcards, studying with friends, or whether it's going to be mind maps. Hopefully you've done this already because we don't really have a lot of time for making mistakes at the moment. If you haven't experimented with different techniques for revising, then I would just suggest you use practice questions and practice papers. This is truly going to be one of the best things you can do. And always make sure that your revision is active, that you are doing something. That it's not just passive revision where you're reading and highlighting your revision guide, because that doesn't teach you anything. You are not going to retain the information like that. Practicing questions, writing down answers, checking your work, improving your work, that is going to be a really, really brilliant thing for you to do. And don't forget that over on my website, over on my YouTube channel, there are now going to be videos for geography, there are workbooks for English, Inspector Calls and Remy and Juliet are already up there. Christmas Carol is coming really, really soon. So there is loads and loads of stuff that I'm writing for you guys. Um, don't forget the exam stress series, I'm really, really going to aim to equip you guys with as much stuff to make sure that you come out of this exam a mentally happy and healthy person. Well, as happy and healthy as when you went into the exams. So, good luck guys, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>